Hey everyone, in this Unity tutorial we're going to be creating a simple spawn system where we can spawn objects at random nodes throughout our world. So if you're creating some kind of open world game or anything like that and you want some kind of spawn system to where it spawns items like chests or anything along those lines, um, I'm going to be showing you guys how to set that up and create a visualized system within the uh, Unity editor where we can see exactly where uh, the items will be spawning on the ground. So uh, the first thing we're going to need is two scripts. Now this spawn marker script is optional. What it's going to be doing is just showing us a line from the spawn point down onto the ground. This way we can visualize it within the editor itself to see exactly where it's going to spawn on the terrain. So in this case, um, it'll allow us pretty much to keep our uh, objects or our spawn points up in the world or up in the sky to where uh, we can spawn them down on the ground. Now, if we had these um, spawn points more on the ground and we decided to raise up our train or move stuff around, it's possible that these items when they spawn are gonna spawn underneath the world and it's something we most likely don't want. So we're just going to keep them up in the sky to where we can spawn them down onto the ground itself. So if, uh, if you don't really care about the visual elements of it within the editor, you can uh, skip this script. But the main script we're going to want to use is this spawn system. So we're just going to be attaching it to an object and it's going to take in all the different spawn nodes that we have uh, within the world or that we want to assign and it's going to randomly generate items uh, based on those spawn nodes. So depending on how many items we want to spawn in the world, we can just set it to uh, spawn as many as we want in uh, different random locations. The next thing we want to do is actually put some spawn points within our world. So if we want to go up here to game object, we're going to click create empty. So a empty game object is going to be something that doesn't have any geometry and when you're in game, it's just pretty much going to be an invisible object. So this is going to be our different references to, from where we want to actually uh, spawn the objects from. So what I'm going to do here, just a couple of things, I'm going to rename this just spawn point. And the next thing we want to do, if we want to visualize this a little bit more, when it's not selected, uh, we can click this and you can select a little icon here. And that's pretty much just a uh, reference for when you're in the editor to see the different objects. And then uh, we're just gonna throw the spawn marker on here. So as you can see, uh, the spawn marker draws a little line. That's not going to be visible in game unless you're in debug mode. But uh, yeah, this is just an easy way. So if you're, um, if you're messing with your world and you're messing with the different spawn points, it's a good way to visualize where that hit point is. So we know um, if it's in this position that it's going to be, the item's going to be spawning on this position on the terrain. Now, if we um, had our node placed onto the ground itself, it would be kind of hard to visualize exactly um, where the item is going to spawn without that line to uh, let us know where that is. And also at the very end, um, at the hit point, we also have a little sphere here. So depending on how big the, your object is, you could adjust this to be larger or smaller just to see if there's any objects around it, like a rock or something that it could possibly um, clip through. So this is just an easy way to visualize for us um, where the item is going to spawn. So even though it um, spawns at this point, it's going to be placed onto the actual ground. So whichever spot it hits on the ground is where we're going to actually spawn the item itself. So the next thing we want to do is actually spawn a couple of these just so we have some random points of interest where we can spawn these objects within the world. Uh, you can create as many of these as you want. We're going to be putting all these into an array and then we can decide how many objects we want to spawn at a given time. So uh, some spawn systems you might just want like two items to spawn within a certain area or from a certain amount of nodes. And you can also create multiple different groups of uh, different nodes to use for different areas. So maybe one area will spawn some chests, maybe another area will spawn uh, some crates or something like that. So uh, this is just the basic way we're going to set up our, our nodes. And uh, one last thing we're gonna want is just another empty game object 
doesn't matter where this is at, uh, unless you wanna just keep it around where these are. And this can just be named spawn system. And we're going to drop the uh, spawn system directly onto there. And then uh, what we'll do is just jump into the code. I'll show you guys um, how we set this up. The first script we're gonna be taking a look at is the spawn marker. So this is just the visualization within the editor where we can visualize that line and the hit point with the sphere. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is um, creating this void on draw gizmos. And this will allow us to actually draw gizmos within the Unity editor that we can visualize. So this is really good for debugging or when you're creating maybe your own uh, custom editor stuff that uh, gives you a good visualization of uh, whatever you're trying to do within there. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a raycast hit. This is going to be the point that it hits from the actual uh, object that we're spawning from. So it's going to be that empty game object that we attach this to. And what we're gonna be doing is calling a physics raycast. So it's just going to take the position of the empty game object uh, we're going to fire the raycast downwards, and then we're going to find what it hits. So uh, depending on the hit point, what we're going to do is draw a line between this empty game object here and the point that we hit on the ground. So you just want to make sure that uh, whatever train or whatever object you're hitting on the ground has some kind of collision, a collision box, or anything like that. And then... Uh, depending on what color you want you can change that as well so if we want to draw the line as like yellow to match uh, the icon you could change it to that um, you just put a dot and you can see all the different uh, colors that we have here so we could probably change it to, to yellow if we want to match that icon and then uh, gizmo dot draw color color dot yellow so um, this is going to be the actual gizmo that we're drawing on the ground itself so that sphere and we're just going to be using gizmos.draw wire sphere and it's going to be spawned at the hit point of where our um, raycast hit and then we, the size of uh, what we want the sphere to be so if you're curious on um, yep everything we use to draw that gizmo in game this is pretty much it it can definitely be customized more than that but for now, this is all we need for our spawn system. So next we'll jump into our actual spawn system itself. Now that we're in our spawn system script, the first thing we're want, gonna wanna do is create this public game object as an array, and we're gonna make this our spawn point. So this is pretty much where we're gonna be storing all of the different spawn points that we made in the editor so that we can actually reference them and spawn objects from those positions. Next, we're going to be setting up just a start function, and what this is going to do is call this method when we start our game. So uh, right now, it's not going to be a very advanced system for our spawning. Um, we're not gonna have a way to respawn objects or detect if a player picked up an object or not. Uh, that could be for a future tutorial. But for right now, what we wanna do is randomize those spawn points and spawn the objects in those randomized positions. Now, there are plenty of different ways you could do this, but in my example, I'm just going to be using a list. And um, so what we're gonna be doing is adding all of our spawn points here to a temporary list. And from there, what we're going to do is add all our spawn points um, from that array to our uh, list here. So once we have it added to our actual list, we can uh, mess with this a little bit. So I'm gonna be using this temp spawn points dot shuffle. Now before this uh, tutorial, I forgot that um, this is a custom uh, method that I created. So what this does is allow you to shuffle a list so whatever objects are within your list, it'll shuffle it around and randomize it. And then from here, what we can do is grab uh, just an order depending on how many we want. Um, it'll just grab random positions there. You could also uh, just remove a bunch of objects from this list as well. But for right now, we're just going to leave it as the shuffle. 
So um, after this part of the script, I'm going to show you how to create that extension and I'll probably uh, include that in the description below. So we'll just go to the next part. We're going to be creating a for loop. So this is going to go through as many times as we specify. Uh, we're just going to set this number to whatever we want. Um, do not set this number higher than the amount of items in your array that you have. Um, this is probably not the best way to do this. But uh, depending on how many pit spawn points that we have, as long as we set it as a low number, it's not going to be an issue. If you run into areas where, you know, there's two spawn points and you're trying to spawn five different items, uh, you'll probably run into some errors or you'll just see that your items won't spawn. So just remember to keep this uh, lower than the amount of spawn points that you are using, just so you don't run into any issues there. Next, what we're going to be doing is creating something similar to what we did with the visualization of the gizmo. So we're going to be creating a rate cast hit. So this is going to be a hit point that our rate cast uh, hits at. And we're going to be calling a physics rate cast um, from the spawn point position of our game object. So in here is a bunch of stored game objects, um, which are our spawn points. And depending on our array, uh, which one we have selected. So when we have a list here and we shuffle it, it's going to be in a random order, but we're just going to go 0, 1, 2, and it's going to spawn objects at those uh, game obje empty game object uh, transform positions. And what it's going to do from there is fire a raycast uh, downwards towards the ground, and then we have this out hit for whatever it hit. So depending on if it's your train or some other kind of object, whatever it hit is going to be the uh, hit position. So we're going to be creating a location and we're going to be taking the X, Y, and Z of that hit position where it hit on the ground. Now the only difference we're doing here for the Y is adding to it. So depending on how large your object is, if it's a chest or a box or something, um, you're going to want it to spawn above the ground. So if you leave this, if you take this off, um, your object's probably going to be clipping into the ground. You might want to model your object to be so that uh, part of it can be clipping into the ground and adjust this accordingly. Um, we could also add in something in here late, later that calculates the size of the object and um, does the calculations and make sure it's always above the ground. But for now, just for testing, we're going to leave it at that. And then our final thing is going to actually be instantiating an object. So we could create a prefab. We could put that in here. Um, so if it was a chest or um, a crate or something, we could uh, add that in here. But for now, we're just going to be creating a primitive cube that we can spawn just to visualize that it's working. And then uh, location, yep, it's just going to be the hit position that we set here. And then uh, transformed out rotation, that's just going to be its basic rotation. Um, so now that we have all that done, uh, we're going to go jump into the list extensions. I'm going to show you that script real quick. Here's our list extension. So this is going to be the script that we use to actually randomize our list. So this is pretty much just an extension of our list. It allows us to add different methods that we can use. And in this one, it's pretty much just a random uh, generator to where we can randomize all the objects within our list. So yeah, I'm not gonna really go into this too much, but I will be including the script down in the description below if you guys wanna check it out. Now that we're back in the Unity Editor, what we're going to want to do is attach these spawn points and get that all set up. So if we click on our spawn system, uh, you're going to want to add the number of uh, spawn locations that we want. So what we'll do is just grab and drag and drop each one of those into here. Uh, if you wanted to speed this up a little bit more, you could create a uh, simple system that just finds all the game objects that are named spawn point and adds them to this list at runtime. But uh, for this example, we will just go in here and add all these by hand. So once we have all those added, our system should be set up and we can run this. 
So now that we're running the game, you can see that uh, there's more than just three cubes that spawned. Uh, there's a couple of extra ones. I think it's the way that we created the uh, primitive cube, but I think if we make it a different way, we can get this to work. Um, so we're just going to jump back into the code and fix that. So typically with this, um, if you used a prefab in place of this uh, primitive cube, it should work. Not sure if it's a bug or what's going on with that, of why it's duplicating two. Uh, but what we're going to do for now, just as a placeholder, is just create a primitive cube this way and assign the location. So that should correct the issue and we can go check it out real quick. So now if we start the editor again, we can see that we're only getting three cubes to spawn now, which is exactly what we want. So if we go jump close, we can see that we have a small cube spawning here. So yep, all you need to do is change out the cube for an actual prefab of your item to get it to spawn. You can also change the amount of objects you want to spawn and it should randomize each time. So if we check here of which uh, locations it spawned at and we jump back in the game, it should be three completely different uh, locations. So if we see here, we have three brand new spawn points of where it spawned at. So yep, uh, that is a simple way of creating a very basic spawn system. Maybe in the future we can create a more advanced spawn system with uh, timers respawning and able to pick up the items and uh, have it start a timer to where they respawn. Uh, but for now, hopefully this helps some of you out. Um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.